Hello, and welcome to this video series for healthcare educators on teaching in an online synchronous classroom, such as webinars, with a focus on Zoom. I'm Heather McNeil, Physician and Faculty Lead, Educational Technologies, Continuing Professional Development at the University of Toronto. The pandemic has caused a rapid shift to online learning, and we hope that these videos will help with the knowledge, skills, and confidence to teach online, both now and into the future. Synchronous online learning occurs when data is sent and received at the same time. The classic example of this is webinars or online meetings. This contrasts with asynchronous environments such as discussion boards or social media, where learners are posting and learning at different times from each other. In this video series, we will refer to synchronous online learning as synchronous learning for simplicity. There are many types of synchronous platforms, such as Adobe Connect or Blackboard Collaborate, which have similar features to Zoom, such as audio and video sharing, breakout rooms, whiteboard and annotation, chat and polls. Synchronous meetings, such as GoToMeeting or Google Meets, also have video, audio, screen sharing and chat, but lack the other advanced features. Zoom has two types of synchronous environments, meetings, which are typically up to 100 people, and webinars for larger groups. Meetings allow for more interactive features in webinars, and we'll be focusing on meetings in this series. To get the most out of these videos, please pause this video and set up a free Zoom account now at zoom.us. This will allow you to try out the principles of online teaching and features of Zoom as we learn together. As well, to appreciate both what you see as a teacher and what your learners will see, you should have two computers set up, as shown here. One as a host and one as a participant, or at least one computer as a host and a smartphone as a participant. You can see here that my main or host computer also has two monitors to allow more real estate to see my participant videos and participant pod, as well as chat and my slides. Otherwise, this is a lot to fit into one screen. So take this time now to set up a Zoom account and your two computer setup. Don't worry, we'll be waiting right here. Now that you're back, remember, teaching in a synchronous environment is different than in a face-to-face -face one, and you'll need to adjust your methods and materials to maximize learning. Overall though, the same principles that are important in face-to-face -face teaching, interactivity, feedback, repetition, reflection, social learning, are important in an online environment to make learning stick. You may be surprised by how synchronous learning gives you the opportunity to make learning even more powerful with the right planning and techniques. Therefore, although we'll be teaching you what buttons to click in Zoom, what's even more important for the effectiveness of your online teaching is incorporating effective teaching principles. As such, each of these video series is divided into these effective principles. Lastly, when possible, a co-facilitation model is best practice in synchronous teaching. Trying to manage the technical aspects, monitor the chat and questions, promote interactivity and group dynamics, and manage the content is just too much for any one individual to effectively manage. If you don't have a co-facilitator, try to engage the assistance of one to two tech-savvy participants or colleagues to assist you during your talk, ideally ahead of time. At the end of each video, we will be asking you to 1. Reflect on what you've learned 2. Consider how you will incorporate best practices and pedagogy into your synchronous teaching and 3. Build a comfort level with using the various pods and features of Zoom. So let's get started. Number 1. Reflect on what you've learned from this video. Number 2. Make sure you're set up with two computers or at least one computer and one cell phone. One computer will function as a host view from your free account, and one as a participant that you'll be inviting into your meeting. Consider how you might incorporate a co-facilitator or at least a volunteer into your teaching, or maybe invite a colleague to learn along with you in this video series who will be teaching with you later. And number three, set up a free Zoom account if you haven't already, and create a new meeting called Synchronous Teaching. Check out the settings you might want to consider for the meeting and copy the invite. Send out the invite to another of your email addresses and pull up this invite from your participant computer. Now that you're set up, 
Let's move on to video number two on getting started with a focus on audio, video, internet setup, content modifications for an online environment, backend setup, and learner considerations.